بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اینڈ عید مبارک ٹو آل آف مائی ویورس ویلکم ٹو دا نیو لیکچر آف ایڈوانس آبجیکٹ انٹر سافٹ ویئر انجینئرنگ دیٹ از دا لیکچر نمبر 15 اینڈ آئی ایم اسٹارٹنگ دا نیو چیپٹر کمپیریزن آف کمپوننٹ بیسڈ ڈویلپمنٹ ماڈلز اینڈ دا فرسٹ ماڈل از دا آبجیکٹ انٹر ماڈل وچ واز ایوالڈ آفٹر دا ایولوشنری ماڈل اینڈ اٹ واز دا کسٹمائزڈ ورژن آف اسپائرل ماڈل and instead of having the engineering phase and testing phase separate in object oriented model engineering and testing testing phases are merged so we are reusing the previous previously developed classes or the objects and at the same time we are doing the development of new components new objects new classes so that's the concept that only one change from the spiral model and it was integrated in terms of engineering and testing phases and then it was said it was claimed that it is object oriented model though industry software companies did not accept this change and they considered that it is still spiral model so it was not the very popular model used by the industry so we start with the customer communication the first phase like the spiral planning second phase risk analysis third phase engineering and testing phase as are merged so this that is one phase the phase number 4 and customer evaluation the fifth phase and then there is a release and then we start the next cycle so that's about the first object oriented model the main advantages of object oriented model as engineering testing phase is merged to reuse the previously developed classes so it's suitable for object oriented development in terms of reusability of classes or the components or objects easy to debug like spiral and we can develop complete software it's suitable for modular development suitable if you have less number of developers so by having the first release early you can have the payment cycle and then you can hire more resources more team members and you can start the the Uh, in terms of multiple releases multiple teams you can hire more staff and you can deliver the core functionality early so it is suitable for web development projects as well disadvantages like the spiral it is not suitable for small scale projects and it is not suitable for artificial neural networks and safety critical projects because it's one of the evolutionary models and we need to keep changing the requirements and we are changing the architecture because of that you can't use it for safety critical project projects where you have to freeze the requirements so what if our model or linear sequential model is the most suitable model or the classical model for safety critical projects as i just cover the safety critical projects are those projects where human life risks are involved like fire alarming system nuclear reactor control system flight control system space shuttle system where human life risks are involved so we considered them we categorized them safety critical projects and then rational unified process model was introduced and it was a big hit and it got the popularity and software companies accepted it as object oriented model and IBM used it for first is it used RUP model the rational unified process model as the first project and then after the success in the IBM it got popularity and software company started using it and before agile RUP was the most widely used model for the medium and large scale projects RUP has integrated UML so UML unified modeling language was first time introduced as part of methodology or the model it has four phases inception elaboration construction and transition so inception elaboration construction transition these are the four phases but there are cycles that are related to the activities that we need to accomplish while using the rational unified process model so we have activities communication planning 
modeling construction deployment and the release is there so we have communication activities planning activities modeling activities construction activities deployment activities and we have sub cycles like inception is linked with communication and planning so there is a repeat repetition there is a, yeah there is a in, increment or we can say there is a cycle so there is one big cycle inception elaboration construction transition but there are sub cycles and this is the first sub cycle communication planning are linked with inception so you communicate with the customer and you do planning while performing planning you feel that requirements are not covered are not collected properly so you can go back and you can communicate with the customer unlike the spiral model when you have to communicate in the next release so there is a there is this repetition or we can say you can go back and in terms of you can repeat the cycle so this is first sub cycle and then elaboration is linked with the planning and modeling so you do planning in terms of contract feasibility assessment we call it project specs and while you are preparing the project specs you feel that there are something it is not covered you can go back and you can communicate with the customer stakeholders and then modeling means analysis and design so two phases activities are merged in modeling activities so elaboration is composed of planning and modeling and you do analysis after the analysis you cover the detail requirements and you feel that project specs in project specs the cost estimation schedule estimations are not performed accurately you can go back to the planning activities and you can revise your project specs or the proposal or the baseline document so project specs is also called proposal academically we call it proposal or the baseline document because it's a foundation of the project the planning document and then you can go back and you can improve this is a verification if planning document is fine you can move to design activities and you perform the design activities then after the elaboration phase you have construction phase construction phase is linked with construction activity construction mean coding testing maintenance and then transition the fourth phase there is third sub cycle it is linked with construction and deployment now in construction activities construction phase you perform coding testing maintenance testing involves unit testing integration testing system testing acceptance testing but acceptance only alpha because there is a deployment the transition is linked with construction and deployment so you have beta alpha testing and beta testing so alpha testing is performed in the construction phase and beta testing is performed in the transition phase because you transit the software from software company side to customer side and during the beta testing customer asks you to make some changes or there are defects reported and then there is a sub cycle so you can go back to the construction you can change you can fix the defects and do again coding testing unit testing integration testing system testing again alpha and then in the transition again beta you transit from software company side to customer side and the beta testing again there is a cycle if customer is satisfied with the beta then you release the final version the release activities and then there is next sub cycle that the main cycle for the next release so first release is delivered and then you start the inception activities inception phase activities in terms of communication in terms of planning that is the core requirements or the usage how to use how to implement the rational unified process model 
it has diagram which is called cross cutting concerns of rational unified model you have horizontal activities and you have vertical activities the horizontal activities involve inception elaboration construction transition the phases so elaboration one because you can you can release multiple releases you can deliver multiple releases you can ship multiple releases you can have multiple teams so elaboration one elaboration two release one release two construction one construction two transition one transition two and vertically you have activities or workflow activities in terms of business modeling in terms of requirements analysis and design implementation test deployment configuration and change management project management so these are vertical activities so it's very close with uml because at the analysis level after collecting the detailed requirements after gathering the detailed requirements you model them using uml use case diagram class diagram sequence diagram component diagram deployment diagram activity diagram state transition diagram swim lane transition diagram package diagram so component diagram there are so many diagram so use case and class are called static diagrams static modeling and the sequence diagram activity diagram state diagram they are called the dynamic modeling so it's very close with the uml you have to use as a part of methodology as a part of process model uml so it's incremental like the spiral we have early testing and validation and you have sub cycles the horizontal dimension represents the dynamic because inception in initial inception one inception two elaboration one elaboration two construction one to transition two transition one transition two so you have dynamic aspects and these are called the life cycle phases iterations milestones and the vertical dimension represents the static aspects which are activities workflow activities in terms of disciplines artifacts roles and the model emphasizes all activities are performed in parallel at a given time so one activity may have more emphasis than the other like modeling and the design activities or the business modeling activities and analyst during the inception phase communicate or project manager analyst communicate with the customer to gather the basic requirements and the objective is how the working of current system how the current system works what are the problems of the current system what is the scope of new system what are the main functionalities of new system what are the category of, of users how many categories of users what are their roles initial use case diagram and rough architecture of the proposed system or the new system in the elaboration phase you have to collect gather detailed requirements and you use detailed use case diagram and use case descriptions class diagram sequence diagram depending upon the software company to software company as per my experience i visited almost 100 plus companies most of the companies they are not deploying they are not using they are not implementing all the uml diagram there are some software companies using only use case diagram or the sequence or the class diagram or use case and class or use case and the sequence when i asked them the the architect why you are using only one diagram he answered me because of the resources or because of time saving cost saving we don't have enough time to deliver to the customer to cut down the time and the cost and the resources and the efforts and we are enough professional that the programmer doesn't need to ask too many questions regarding the architecture but whatever the diagram we draw it should be complete and comprehensive in all aspects like i will give example of infosys descon infosys company which are implementing a great project for american real estate dot com company which are which is working in 50 states and it's an erp system the the project manager he showed me the use case diagram they were using only use case diagram no class no sequence 
but use case diagram with use case descriptions and there are two pages of use case description for each use case so it is so complete so comprehensive including the interfaces including the functionalities including the components everything is there so very detailed very comprehensive anyhow as per the methodology you need to implement the uml diagrams to model the requirement to model the architecture and then you have construction at phase Construction phase has coding activities, testing activities, maintenance activities, as I just covered, testing only up to alpha. Make sure. And the transition beta testing, because you deploy, deployment is there, deployment activity is a part of transition phase, not of construction phase. You do beta testing, and the beta testing customer will report your defects. And as I told you, it's not possible that we don't have any defect, we don't have any bug. So beta testing and then there is a sub cycle, you can go back to the construction activities and you do the coding, you make the changes, you fix the bugs and then you again perform the unit testing, integration testing, system testing and then the alpha and then the beta. There is a sub cycle until customer approves the beta and then you release the version. And during the transition phase, you have to prepare the user manuals and the installation, deployment, shipment. The installation is also called deployment, shipment, and then there is a training. You train the users. That's also part of transition security. Main advantage of Russian Unified Process Model. It's one of the evolutionary model. So it inherits most of the advantages of spiral model very strong documentation, comprehensive documentation because UML is a part of methodology, high quality software because a lot of verification, three sub cycles are there at the inception level, then at the elaboration level, then third cycle is at the transition level, not at the construction. Construction is only linked with the construction activities, the coding, testing and the maintenance. And result is high quality software because very, you have very strong documentation and you verify the requirements and you do the lot of UML diagrams, front-end architecture, back-end architecture, comprehensive architecture, so high quality software is there and there is verification cycle, alpha test, validation cycle, alpha testing, beta testing. Main disadvantages, it's not suitable for small scale projects because of time consuming, cost consuming. It's not suitable for safety critical projects like the all spiral models because you are changing the architecture and it is a disaster it is catastrophic for the safety critical projects that you change the architecture because you have to freeze the requirement you cannot change the requirements and there is no reference for reusability of classes that's one of the prominent drawback of rational unified process model it's up to the skill of project manager how to reuse the classes if you see the rational unified model you view the model you don't find any phase where you can see there is a reuse Thank you very much. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Take care. Assalamu alaikum.